last thing I'm going to want when I end it about governing ourselves and how it relates to driving traffic laws. I was talking about the high fatality rate in Texas. What my thoughts were on it. Just the reasons for it. Possible reasons. for everybody in a road that's that crowded for everybody to go 75 well if the speed limit 75 think about it most people are going to likely be doing 80 plus granted if the road has hardly any traffic it's up to the individuals they want to go 80 fine if there isn't much usage on that road it's not going to really impact anybody else. But if the road is very, very crowded with traffic and everybody's trying to do 80 miles an hour, there's going to be accidents. People are going to get killed, no matter how much you might try to say otherwise. Statistics bear that out. Driving through Texas, I saw a number, several accidents going through the state just this time around in place of that. We're not really in the middle of major metropolitan areas, but the roads were still very heavily used. So what is really an appropriate speed? They claim that the interstate highway system was designed to travel 75, 80 miles an hour. Maybe that's true if there isn't much other traffic around you. If the road isn't heavily used, it might be okay to go that speed if it's your wish to. But if the, the recent years, most interstate highways have become very heavily traveled, few exceptions. They have not really built any new interstate highways to accommodate the increased traffic. People use their GPS now, and GPS tells them to take interstate highways to go places. So the interstate highways have become much, much more crowded in recent years than they used to be. So it's not hard to figure out why fatalities have increased in many states. bottom line it ultimately boils down to people learning to govern themselves even if the state says it's okay to do 80 miles an hour are you always going to do 80 miles an hour no matter what there are times when it's not okay to do 80 miles an hour in my humble opinion if a person wants to go that fast, they need to get their pilot's license and get an airplane to fly or something. And that's my opinion. I mean, that, I know not everybody would agree with that. This is a 
66 and 67, Louisiana Highway 9 for Homer in Arcadia. I started saying where I got cut off last time, most people want the state to dictate to them how fast they can go, and then they'll add 7 miles an hour to it. So if the speed limit 75, they'll do 83, 84 miles an hour. So in Texas, probably many people on the highways that travel are doing that speed, and I see that traveling through that state. Uh, yesterday on I-20, most people were appeared to be doing low 80s or even higher in some cases. Not see much of police presence out there to enforce the, even the 75 limit. That boils down to just because everybody else is doing something, does that make it the best possible solution or best thing to do? No, not necessarily. In many cases, what everybody else is doing isn't really the best thing. In many cases, actually. People are going low 80s in their cars, their vehicles are going to wear out exponentially faster than they go at a slower speed. I almost believe part of the reason speed limits are raised is for the auto industry to make more money, and the petroleum industry as well, because obviously you're going to use up a lot more fuel if you're going that speed versus a slower rate of speed. And I don't really think it makes a tremendous difference in time. Maybe slight difference. I say that because very frequently I see people pass me again and again and again in the course of the day that are going much faster than me. And I'll be looking and I'll see that car or even truck go by me again and again and again. In reality, they're not really going any faster than me. Well, in the big picture. But they're wearing out their vehicle a lot faster, wearing out their brakes a lot faster, wearing out their tires a lot faster than I am. Since I have had this truck, I have not ever had to replace the brakes in three years. They only had to replace the pads in that recent repair because oil got in from the date of the brittle. There was still plenty of pads left. When I bought the truck, I had them replace the pads from the front two tires. They only put a minimal amount there, and I have yet to have to replace them in three years. They're still good. So that's what governing ourselves is all about. Decide ourselves how fast we're going to go. It, uh, it's an appropriate speed, optimal speed for our vehicle so that it's going to last and yet get us where we need to go. That's what real freedom is all about making wise decisions 
even with how we drive, how we use the resources and things that are given to us by God, do we use them wisely? Do we drive in a responsible manner and takes into consideration lots of different factors that vary day to day? check our vehicles, do we check our tires periodically to see if anything is amiss, this way we can correct it before it puts us on the side of the road to see evil. have an oil leak, do we fix it? We have a tire losing air, do we get that either replaced or fixed? In my humble opinion, I don't think it's ever appropriate to do 80 miles an hour in a car. I know states that allow it because the legislators themselves want to go faster. Speed, it's all about speed. I feel there's no necessity to do 80 miles an hour in a car. Ever. I don't feel it's ever necessary. I know many won't agree with me. I think 55, 60 is an optimal speed for cars. If you go any faster than that, you're exponentially going to wear the car out faster. And not only that, Put yourself exponentially more at risk. But I know everybody does it. Does that necessarily make it the best thing? No, not necessarily. Even when I drove my cars, I very rarely drove them over 60 miles an hour. I got 42 miles per gallon on my Aspire that I used to have because of the way I drove it. So why am I bringing this all out? Because again, these are things that can help us get through life. A little bit more smoothly. Many people make problems for themselves, additional problems, additional stress. On top of what we already have to experience as part of life. For example, I recently learned yesterday that my brother broke his foot and I asked myself, well, why did he get in that accident? What happened? What what went on in his mind to cause him to get in such an accident that now he's going to be laid up for like eight weeks perhaps? Why would somebody want to put themselves in that position with an accident? I 
know, it's easy to feel sorry for somebody that gets in that predicament and feel really horrible for them. I do feel compassion. But I do ask myself, well, what went on up in his mind to cause that accident? What did his mind trigger him to create that? I hate to say create that accident, but ultimately that's what boils down to. There's no such thing as being a victim to something. Seventy-seven Louisiana five zero seven six twelve. So I was pondering over well, what could have gone on in this mind. I was saying to myself, "Yeah, it all starts in the mind. His foot is broken because of something in the mind that caused him to create that accident." It might have looked like just a random slip or something, but was you know what went on in his mind that caused that slip to happen to where it led to that, to where now he's going to be laid up for so long, and who knows if he's even going to totally recover from it. so much pain and render themselves immobile, not even leave them walk for a period of time. Yeah. 